At first, it sounds so unbelievable, it's laugh out loud funny. But this is certainly no joke. It's an extremely rare and baffling condition that affects the way people speak. One moment, they're completely normal. The next, they're talking in a thick foreign accent. But instead of scratching their heads in bewilderment, scientists are now trying to unlock the secrets of this strange syndrome by using incredible technology to map what's going on inside the brain. It's very welcome news for those who are struggling to recognise the sound of their own voice. When I look in the mirror, I see me. But when I open my mouth, I sound different. Imagine suddenly developing an accent from a country you've never even visited. I woke up with an Irish sounding accent. It's so bizarre, you'd be forgiven for questioning if this could possibly be real. The Australian accent that I have known for a very long time was just wiped out overnight. But for Angie Yen, this is her new reality. Can I please get a strawberry milkshake and some potato fries with some extra ketchup? Yeah, sure. The sound of her own voice has been somewhat amusing of late. Do you get many people asking where you're from when they hear you talk? You know, sometimes people, they, they do a double take, like, you know, oh, yeah, she just sounds different. People ask me, you know, oh, so where are you from? And I'm like, oh, you know, I actually grew up here in, in Brisbane. Angie has caught many a friend off guard, but her weird new accent can stump the odd stranger too. Where would you say Angie's from when you hear her speak? Oh, I'm not too sure. Keep speaking? I can't quite tell. Um, well, I am looking forward to digging into those large fries with the ketchup and the milkshake. Sound a little bit Irish, maybe. Maybe? Well, how Irish are you? Um, I've never been to Ireland in my life. Really? Never. Yeah, I can see it coming through very thick now. <laughs> <laughs> it's very prominent. While she tries to laugh it off, adjusting to this new voice has been tough for Angie. When did you first notice your accent change? Um, I was on the 28th of April, I'll never forget that day. I was just singing as I do, and all of a sudden, all these voices and sounds were coming out of my mouth, that's not my own. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hang on a second, am I, am I dreaming about this? Angie has now been diagnosed with a condition known as Foreign Accent Syndrome, or FAS. It's a medical mystery, thought to be caused by psychological or neurological damage to the brain. So rare, there have only ever been about 100 cases. Uh, latte in uh, deck wake up, uh, sure. large one. Nine years ago, 60 Minutes met some of them, including British woman Sarah Colwell, whose accent changed following a severe migraine. She said, no, you sound like you can work at a Chinese restaurant. She said, yeah, you look could work in the local China house or something. And Australian Cindy Hastings, who developed an Eastern European accent after starting new epilepsy medication. Yes, OK, I speak a foreign accent, so it makes sense. But for goodness sake, what is foreign accent syndrome? 28-year-old Angie is the latest case to join this strange club. She developed her Irish accent 10 days after having her tonsils removed. But whether this is the cause, we'll never know. My brain has located my voice to a different country without a visa. I spent the whole day yesterday freaking out. It's a strange place to look for answers. Beauty, billabong. But so Water. perplexed by her condition, Angie turned to social media platform TikTok to document her journey. So it is quite a struggle. Yes, I know that I need medical attention and help. What was it that made you want to go on TikTok? So at first my friends just say, send us videos. We don't believe you, you know? And then I was like, oh, okay, I'll make a video for you. And they're like, oh my goodness, it's true. Can your friends tell me that my accent is from a cool part of Ireland or not? While many of Angie's followers did believe her, the intrigue also brought out the sceptics. And very quickly, trolls took hold. This is trash. It's fake, bro. This is the biggest load of shit. Accusing her of faking her newfound accent for attention. Fake. You're definitely putting that leprechaun accent on. Attention-seeking at its finest. I call bullshit. Could you fake it? 
I think if I was a very good voice actor, I can, but you know, it doesn't benefit me in any way. Yeah, what does happen when you try to speak with an Aussie twang? It sounds like a train wreck. <laughs> does it? Try it me. Does. Go on, let's... Um, <laughs> hey, Sheila, I'm just going down to the bottle Do you want me to grab anything for the snags on the Barbie? <laughs> Yeah, you're right. That doesn't sound very no, good. No, <laughs> not at all. I do not sound like you. <laughs> As you're about to hear in this customer service call... OK. So, Ange, this is a recording you took before your voice changed? Yeah, I did. Until recently, Angie sounded like a completely different person. I'm just calling to cancel my membership and I was just wondering for the monthly payments that I've paid, uh, will the remainder be refunded as per, like, pro rata? What state we come from? Queensland. Queensland, OK. When you say Queensland there, that's a fair dinkum Aussie accent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you listen back to recordings of how you used to sound, what goes through your mind? It's a really hard feeling to describe because it's like, you know, that, that was me. People don't really know what they've lost until it's gone. Mm. All right, thank you very much for your help. No problem at all. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Foreign accent syndrome is a legitimate condition. It's described as a person's speech changing so that it sounds as though they're speaking in a different accent mm. to their habitual accent. It does... And you have foreign accent syndrome? Yes. You're able to diagnose her with that condition? Well, she is a person who is speaking with accented speech that is not her native accent. So now I'm just going to get you to sing a song that we all know, which is Happy Birthday. Determined to find out why she suddenly sounds like she's from the land of the leprechaun, Angie has travelled to the University of Sydney to undergo a rigorous assessment with speech pathologist Professor Kiri Ballard. Happy birthday, dear Jenny. Happy birthday to you. Good. During the two-hour analysis, she put Angie through a range of tests to monitor the consistency in her articulation. Here is the potato. It's the word potato. And also the intonation pattern sounds quite Irish. So After analysing her session with Angie, Professor Ballard is sharing what she's discovered. Here is a potato. <laughs> that sounds very Irish. Yeah. And it sounds Irish because we have a, an A mm -hmm. sound and her production is more A. Potato. Potato. Mm -hmm. Feet. Ham. Professor Ballard yeah. says FAS can be triggered by psychological or neurological damage, likening the brain to a computer. Take, bow, bit. So a computer is hardware and software. And when you have a stroke or Parkinson's disease, part of the hardware is damaged. Mm -hmm. And you have your, your software, your programs have to adjust and do the best they can. Mm -hmm. And usually we can't compensate completely. So we're left with a speech disorder, which may sometimes sound like a foreign accent. In Angie's case, we haven't been able to find anything wrong with the hardware. So we're going to say then there's something wrong with the software. As rare as the condition is, Angie is not alone in her unusual battle. Lots of people think I must have just come here to Australia. She may sound like an international tourist, but don't be fooled. <laughs> they don't believe you, do they? No, they don't. It's weird having people constantly ask you if you're where you're from in Ireland or, or Scotland even. Mm. Um, and to say, no, I'm from the Northern Territory and I've never been to Ireland before. Two years ago, 32-year-old Kate Baggs suffered a hemiplegic migraine, causing paralysis in her body and face for almost two months. When she finally regained movement, she gained an Irish accent too. In the middle of a sentence, my accent just shifted and it was the strangest feeling. Mid-sentence? Mid literally mid-sentence. And I kind of went, that sounds really odd. I wonder what that is. Was it a bit of a novelty for you early on? A little bit, but mostly it was just a bit confusing, I think. I never realised how you sound is actually really quite a part of your identity. Mm. Um, and when it, it changed, it was quite difficult to cope with that for a while. Um, but after, probably after a couple of months, I just decided, look, this is going to be me for a while. Just accept it. 
It's so pretty here. It is. It's, it's a bit cold, but it's very pretty. With the support of her mum, Kate has come to terms with her new accent. Fancy so pretty. In the opera house. I've only seen it a few times in my life. But it's been tough being out of the ordinary. There are so few people in the world who have foreign accent syndrome. Are you looking forward to meeting Angie? Yeah, I really am looking forward to meeting Angie. And I don't think there are a whole lot of people who have been bestowed an Irish accent with this um, syndrome. So I'm, I'm actually quite excited to help her through what I went through. How are you doing? <laughs> Today, Angie Yen and Kate Baggs are meeting for the first time. I'm so happy oh, to see you. <laughs> Two of us. There is, no. there is more of us, I promise. I really do promise. Oh, you sound like me. <laughs> These two Australian women have something very unusual in common. They both woke up one day sounding Irish. It's a rare condition known as foreign accent syndrome or FAS. It's just the luck of the draw. We both picked a four leaf clover. As horrible as it is for you to have had this happen, <laughs> it's been a blessing for me because it's proved that I'm not making it up. No. For Angie, this emotional meeting has brought her a step closer to finding some solace. So far, navigating this strange new world of FAS has not been easy. I think the answers are here somewhere in this journey. We just have to look in the right place. How are you going there? Oh, I'm just a bit nervous. Yeah? Yeah, I haven't done one like this before. As part of her journey, she's come to Sydney to try to learn why she sounds like she's actually from Dublin. So it's about 15 minutes, makes lots of noise, just have to keep really still for the scan, okay? First up, she has a functional MRI brain scan so that cutting edge software called Omniscient can measure her neurological activity. The data is dissected and crunched down into a grid that looks like a crossword puzzle where scientists are able to pinpoint neurological messages. Black and white squares represent normal function, while red squares highlight overactive pathways, and blue squares show areas that aren't firing enough. What we want to do now is to look at how the brain is functioning. Shortly after the scan, neuroscientist Dr Michael Shugru is able to show Angie what's happening inside her brain. Now, most of your networks are Stone Cold Normal is one of those normal scans you see, but that's your language system. And so all the reds and blues are different parts of the language system, those areas I showed you, that are over-firing together. So those red bits in an ordinary person would be white? Yeah, you're not supposed to have more than one or two squares at most. It's the first time this technology has been used on a patient with foreign accent syndrome, and the results are striking. That's the problem, and there is something wrong, there it is. So what does that mean? Well, the answer is, we don't know. You're the first person we've ever seen this in, and probably one of the first people in the world. But we do know that we have an objective proof that, you know, you're not faking it. There it is. Oh, Angie, you're right. You weren't <laughs> expecting to hear that. No. Oh. Yeah. No. What are you thinking? Well, on one hand, I'm, I feel relieved that I now have objective proof to people that I am not faking this. This is not me. But on the other hand, sorry, I have more questions. Um, am I, with all these things going on in my head, why did this happen? And am I ever going to get back to my old self? We don't know. And we don't necessarily know what the path forward for it is. That's at the edge of science. But for the first time, we actually can see it, mm -hmm. which is a lot closer to an answer than you ever were before. What was your reaction when you saw the results of Angie's scan? At first, you get excited and say, that's it. And then you have to be a scientist and say, OK, well, let's look at everything else. And then let's temper our enthusiasm. It's always a little different than you think. And this one was the most 
extreme language you know, network I'd ever seen. What does that tell you? It certainly suggests that there's something objectively different about how her language system is working than someone else who does not have a problem like this. Like Angie, Kate Baggs has been desperate to know more about her FAS. She'd previously had multiple tests and scans, but specialists couldn't find any neurological cause. So she's decided to undergo the same experimental examination as Angie. Incredibly, Dr Mike Shugru finds a similar pattern of abnormal activity in her brain, although it is less severe than Angie's. He believes that's because Kate has had the condition for much longer. And given that this is happening inside of areas of the language system that are talking to each other incorrectly, it's you know a reasonable guess that this has something to do with why your, your speaking has changed over time. Having something say that there is something that's going on that they can visually see and actually prove, mm. it's, it's a relief. It's welcome news. Yeah, it really is. Having someone saying that, hey, Ange, your speech centre is not normal. If anything, it's highly abnormal, and we can see that. It was just a moment of, I guess, euphoria. Here is a banana. Best of all, the imaging of her brain has given Angie hope that one day she could find her old voice again. Here is the banana. Speech pathologist Here's Professor here. Kiri Ballard believes it is Shall possible. There were a couple of tasks that I gave her to do that were designed to see if she would slip back into an Australian accent, and she did. She did? She did. So she reverted back to her original very, accent? Very briefly, yeah. OK, so her Australian accent's not a lost cause? No, no, it's there. And so I think that's a good indicator that she would respond mm. to some guided uh, practice and, and exercises to, to help her get back to the Australian accent. Cheers to your first Guinness. Cheers. Slancher. Slancher. Is that what they say in Ireland? Yes. Okay. Yes, cheers. <laughs> mm. What do you think? Better. <laughs> the face is it all. Is bit, yeah. Coming to terms with foreign accent syndrome is hard for Angie Yen, but meeting Kate Baggs is certainly helping. To hear how she sounds like me, I was like, oh my gosh, there's two of us now. Yeah. I found my village, you know? <laughs> Now, while this pair might sound like they belong in an Irish pub... Well, apparently we're drinking the local brew, but I don't really like it. <laughs> Angie and Kate are still as Aussie as they come. OK, well, this is a true test to see if you're Irish. How quickly can you down this? Oh, no. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Count me out. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.